What we want to look at now is we want to look at Green's theorem, right? Uh, before we get into Green's theorem, there's a couple definitions that we'll need to go through, right? Okay, so we saw already a while ago what a parametric curve is, right? A parametric curve, what you have is x and y being specified as functions of t, right? Okay, and it's for a range of values of t over here. So you have some starting value for t and some end value for t, right? So this was the first example of a parametric curve that we looked at, right? And when t is equal to 0, right, um, what we got is we got the point one zero, right? So we got this point one zero over here. So this is, for this parametric curve, this is your starting point, right? Or also call your initial point, right? So this is the phrase that I use over here, initial point. So initial point is really just your start point, right? And then when t is equal to pi on four, right? What we did is we realized that um, when you put pi on four into your parametric description over here, you get x is equal to 102, y is equal to 102. Okay, so when t is equal to pi on 4, you get uh, 102 and 102, and notice pi on 4 is the end point of this interval. So that gives you the um, the end, end point of your parametric curve, right? Okay, so for this parametric curve here, right, uh, your initial point is 1, 0 over here, and then your end point is 102, 102, right? Okay. Occasionally, you may see diagrams with a parametric curve such as this, and what they'll have is they'll have an arrow on it over here, right? Um, and the arrow is to indicate that, well, this is your initial point or your start point, and this over here is your terminal point or your end point, right? Okay. All right, and I'm um, going from your start to the end over here, well, if you go from start to end, right, then that is an orientation. So we want this is a positive orientation going from start to end, and if you um you go in the next direction, right? If you go from the end to the start, right? If you wanted to do that, right? Then what you'd be doing is you'd be reversing the direction, and that would be a reverse orientation. Okay. All right. Okay. So first definition that we want to consider is um uh closed, right? A par what does it mean for a parametric curve to be closed, right? Okay, so let's look at um, this example here, right? Um, this parametric curve, this is not closed, right? So a parametric, a parametric curve is closed if the, um, the start point and the end point are the same, right? And that's not true over here, right? Over here, your start point is different from the end point, right? So this is not closed, right? Um, on the other hand, over here for this parametric curve, right? This loop here, right? What you could realize is you could realize what you can realize is that this if you say that you have a start point, if your start point was over here, right, then what you'd do is you'd go around uh, the parametric curve and then come back to the same start point, right? So in other words, the end point would be the same as the start point over here, right? Okay, so this here is an example of something that is closed, right? Um, okay, so not closed is when the start and the end are different points, right? Closed is when the start and the end are actually the same points, right? Okay, so the next definition that we want to consider is uh, a simple curve, right? Um, okay, so a simple curve C is a curve that isn't going to intersect itself anywhere between its endpoints, right? Okay, so for example, this curve here, this is the start over here, and this is the end over here. And you want to notice that this curve is not intersecting itself as it goes from the start to the end here. Right? On the other hand, if you start over here, right, and this is a curve in the plane, right? If you start over here and you go around and then you come back, right, you notice that the curve is intersecting itself at this point, right? Okay, so this is an example of something that is not simple, right? Because in this parametric curve, you intersect, the curve is intersecting itself away from the endpoints over here, right? 
Okay, so these are two definitions that we would need that um, a parametric curve is uh, closed and a parametric curve is simple, right? And these are some illustrations of the different cases, right? Right, so you want to notice, for example, this one over here, this is is not simple because it intersects itself over here, right, at this point. And this is also, it's, um, it's not closed, right, because the start point over here is not the same as the end point over here, right? On the other hand, this over here, this is closed because if you if your start point was over here, then you'd come back and you go around and you get back. The end point would be the same as the start point, right? Okay, so it's closed, right? And this also, if your start and the end point are over there, right? As you move along the curve, you're not intersecting yourself anywhere, right? Okay, so this is an example of something that is simple and closed, right? And for your statement of Green's theorem, um, we'll be looking at parametric curves that are actually simple and closed, right? So this is what we want to look at really in this section, right? Something of this sort of um, form, right? Okay, and this one over here, right? If you consider this, right? Suppose your start point was over here and then you moved along, right? And you came back, right? The start would be the same as the end point. So this is closed over here. But on the other hand, as you move along, what happens is that you intersect itself. The curve intersects itself somewhere aside from the start and the end point. So this is not simple, right? Okay, so this is while it's closed, it's not simple because it intersects itself over here, right? Okay, and as I said, this is what we want to look at, right? We're going to be considering, for Green's theorem, we're going to be considering curves that are simple and closed. Okay, and a definition, if I have a simple closed curve here, right, such as this one, right, or this one also over here, right, a positive ori orientation for a simple closed curve, right, is referring to the fact that you go in the direction in which you're traveling along your um, simple closed curve is counterclockwise, right? So notice over here, you're going in a counterclockwise direction here, right? Okay, so for a simple closed curve, positive orientation is considered to be the counterclockwise direction like this here, right? So for the parametric curves that we look at, such as this um, one eighth of an arc of a circle, right? This over here, this is smooth, right? If you're just looking at the, the black curve itself, right? Um, this over here, this arc of the circle, there's no sort of kinks or bends in it, like this over here, right? If you look at this curve over here, you notice that you have this sharp corner over here and you have this sharp corner over here, right? So the ones that we looked at so far, right? These were smooth, right? You didn't have any sort of sharp corners in it, right? Um, Okay, so our next example of something that's smooth is this parametric curve over here, which started from this point and ended at this point, right? Notice this is smooth, right? This has no sort of sharp corners or anything in it, right? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to consider, well, how do we deal with things that have this these sorts of um, sharp corners in it, right? Okay, and how you deal with something like that is really you just, if it has sharp corners in it like this, what you do is you just break it up into the smaller pieces and you want the smaller pieces individually to be smooth, right? Um, okay, so this one, because of these two somewhat sharp corners over here, right? What you're gonna do is you break it up into three pieces, right? And this first piece, C1 over here is smooth. This second piece over here from here to here for the C2 is smooth and then the last piece over here the C3 is smooth right all right okay so well this sort of object over here where you have a curve consisting of uh, smooth pieces the individual pieces are smooth but then the entire thing is not necessarily smooth right this is something called piecewise smooth right Okay, so a curve C is piecewise smooth if um, the entire thing probably isn't smooth, but if you start to look at the individual pieces, right, the individual pieces themselves are actually smooth, right? 
Okay, so it's piecewise, a more formal definition is this, right? So curve C is piecewise smooth if it is um, a finite union of, um, of smooth curves, right? So for example, this one over here, this C over here is a finite union of one, two, three um, smooth curves, right? And then you have this condition that you don't want the curves sort of floating around, right? You don't want a disjoint collection of uh, curves, right? What you want is you want the curves to be joined to each other, right? So this is what this condition is saying for you, right? Um, the terminal point of, for example, C1 has to be equal to the initial point of C2, right? So in other words, the end point of the C1 has to be the this, this start point of the C2, right? And likewise, the end point of the C2 has to be the start point of the C3, right? So that is what this is saying here, right? Okay, so this is what piecewise smooth is, right? It's just a curve that consists of, say, uh, smooth um, components, right? One, two, well, in this case, one, two, three smooth components. So the components are individually smooth, right? But the entire thing, right, the entire union may not be smooth because the where you join, right, the points at which you join, you may have, it may not be smooth at those points, okay? All right, okay, so if I have something that's piecewise smooth like this, right, um, what I want to do now is I want to be able to do a calculator line integral over something that is piecewise smooth like this over here that consists of these three pieces, right? Right now, we already know how to do a line integral over, say, just once you have just something that is smooth, right? So if you have the C1 over here, just going from this point to this point, right? How you'd work out the line integral over C1 is you'd use your formula, right? That we saw how to do already, right? That we talked about, right? That involves your parametric description and you'd need to take your derivative of your component functions across here, right? Okay, so this is this is your formula for calculating line integral of a parametric curve, right? And we're gonna use that over here, right, to work out the line integral for something that is piecewise smooth, right? Now you wanna remember our interpretation of uh, uh, a line integral. A line integral you could interpret as work done, right? So for example, if I have this, uh, remember this is this picture over here. If I'm is I'm starting at this point and I'm going to this point, right? So going from here to here, right? Um, if you're doing a line integral from 1, 1 to 2, 1 along your curve C1, right? What you're actually calculating is you're calculating work done by a vector field as you go from the point 1, 1 to the point 2, 1, right? Okay, so if you sort of consider over here, right, and you have this an ambient vector field, I'll give you an example in a second, right? So you have an uh, underlying vector field here, right? And um, if uh, you start from this point and you go to this point, what you'll be getting is you're going to be getting work done going from here to here, right? But you want the line integral over the entire curve, right? So you want the work done as you go along the entire curve, right? So what would be the work done, right? Well, it'll be the work done going from here to here, right? And then the work done going from along C2, right? So from the start of C2 to the end of C2. And then finally, the work done going from the start of C3 to the end of C3, right? So that would be your work done, right? To get your work done, you'd break it up into pieces, right? You'd get your work done along C1, and then the work done along C2, and the work done along C3, and then you just add it up, right? Okay, so that's actually what this definition is saying here, right? If you wanna calculate your line integral along the entire curve C, right? So um, if you wanna get the work done by the vector field as you move along the entire curve C, right? How you're gonna do it is you're gonna do it with the individual pieces, right? So you calculate your line integral for C1, you calculate the line integral for C2, right? And then for C3, and then you add them all up, right? And that would give you your answer, right? For the line integral along the entire curve C. All right, so let's see an example of calculating a line integral over something that is piecewise smooth, right? So we're looking at this example from your Apex Calculus textbook, right? Okay, so your piecewise smooth parametric curve 
You, this one has two pieces over here, right? This blue um, curve over here and then this red line segment over here, right? You want to notice that this actually is um, a simple closed curve, right? Um, because your start point over here, right? Your start over here is when you go around, so you go up to over here and then you come back down, right? So the start point is the same as the end point. So this is closed, right? And then this parametric curve does not intersect itself anywhere aside from your start and end point over here, right? Um, okay, so this here, this is also simple, right? So this is simple and closed, right? But that doesn't really affect how we calculate the line integral along this parametric curve, right? So to calculate the line integral along this parametric curve, what you need to do is you need to calculate it along your first part over here, which is the blue curve over here. Then calculate it along the red part over here, which is the red curve here. And then you take your answer for the blue curve, you take your answer for the red curve, and then you add them up and that would give you your answer, right? So let's actually um, do the calculation. Okay, so right, so they tell you what the, the vector field is, right? Now notice they're using a, a somewhat different notation than what we have, right? But this, so your vector field, this is your x component here and this is your y component over here, right? So I wrote it out here in different notation, but um, it's carrying the same information, right? So the x component is the x component is three times y minus a half, right? Um, so three times y minus a half, and then the y component is one over here. So your coefficient of the j over here is one. So that's your vector field, right? And you're given a sketch of your vector field. This is a sketch of the vector field, right? It's not really going to help us in terms of the calculation in this case, right? But at least you see in what the vector field is, right? The vector field, it's the light uh, gray arrows. Right, so vector field would be your light gray arrows here. So at each point, in your space, you have an, a vector associated to it, right? And as I said, what we want to do is we want to calculate the line integral of the vector field as we move along this parametric curve, right? Right, okay, so this parametric curve consists of uh, two pieces, your C1 and your C2, right? So how are we going to work out the line integral of my vector field? along your parametric curve C, right? Is you're gonna work out the line integral along the, uh, the blue part, which is the C1, right? So the blue, C1 is the blue curve. And you're gonna work it out over your red curve over here, which is the C2, right? So we've got your line integral over the C1 and then over the C2, right? and then um, you add up your answers, right? So that's how you're gonna do it. Okay, so, well, I need to work out the line integral for C1 and then for C2, right? So how would you work out the line integral? Well, you're just using the same definition that we had before for working out, for working out a line integral, right? So for working out a line integral, this is your definition here, right? This is what we use, right? Okay, so we're using this definition. We want to work it out line integral along C1, right? Um, okay, so what you do is, this is your vector field, right? And what you're doing is you're using your parametric description, right? Okay, so for C1 over here, the X is equal to T, right? And the Y is equal to T cubed, right? So when you're doing your, your line integral over here, and this is your vector field, right? This is the vector field over here, wherever you see the x and the y in this vector field, you're going to replace by 
x is equal to t and y is equal to t cubed respectively, right? And you notice this vector field only has y in it over here, right? So the only thing that you're going to replace is the y. So you're going to replace this y by t cubed, right? So that's why you get this t cubed over here, right? So in this vector field, you simply replace the y for the t cubed, right? So that gives you a vector field over here, right? And then what you need to do is you need to take the dot product of uh, x prime t, y prime t, right? So what you're doing is you're differentiating, if you want, this parametric curve with respect to t, right? So when you differentiate this t over here, you're going to get 1, right, which is this coefficient over here. The coefficient here is 1. And when you differentiate the t cubed over here, you're going to get 3t squared, right? Okay, which gives me this, right? Okay, so this part over here, this this i plus 3t squared j is what I get from differentiating this parametric curve. We're differentiating the components with respect to t. So I got a 1 over here and a 3t squared over here, which is the 3 the 1 and the 3t squared here, right? And then finally, for your line integral, what you're doing is you're integrating the limits of integration come from the t values here, which is 0 and 1, right? So here I'm integrating between 0 and 1, right? So that gives me this first setup for my um, line integral here, right? Okay, so that's for the C1. And then for the C2, right, um, this is your parametric description for C2, right? Okay, so right, the C one is this blue um curve over here and the C two is the red uh straight line segment here, right? Okay, so the parametric description for the C two is given over here, right? Um Notice when I put t is equal to 0 into this, I'm going to get 1 over here and 1 over here, which is this corner point here, which is 1, 1, right? And when I put t is equal to 0, when I put t is equal to 1 into this, I'm going to get 0 here and 0 here. So I get the origin over here, right? So this red curve is starting at this point 1, 1 and ending at the point 0, 0, right? Okay, so this is your parametric description for C2, right? And you want to work out your line integral, right? Okay, so you put in this, so the y is equal to 1 minus t, so you put 1 minus t in for the y, and you get 1 minus t over here, right? Um, okay, and then also you'd need to differentiate your component functions with respect to t. When you differentiate over here, this 1 minus t, you're going to get minus 1. When you differentiate this 1 minus t, you're going to get minus 1. So I get this minus i over here and this minus j over here, right? Okay, so this would be what I have so far, and now what you need to do is you need to take a dot product, right? Okay, so taking a dot product is just multiplying the components. So this is one times this three t cubed minus a half, right? And when you multiply the three t cubed, the three by what's inside this bracket, you're gonna get three t cubed minus three on two, right? So that's coming from the, um, the dot, when you're taking the dot product with the i components. And then with the j components, you're going to get 1 times the 3t squared, which is this here, right? Right, um, this over here would simplify it to a half minus t, right? And when I multiply, okay, so anyway, so this expression, you're going to take, multiply this by minus 1, right? And when you multiply this by minus 1, what you will get is you're going to get... Um, Right, so when you multiply, so you're going to take a dot product of the i components. So you're going to be multiplying this coefficient of the i over here by minus one, right? And okay, so what you do is you work out your inside bracket over here. This is a half minus t, right? Um, and then you're going to be multiplying that by minus one, right? So you're going to get uh, three times you're going to get minus 3 times a half, right, which would give you the minus 3 on 2. And then you have a minus 3t by a minus 1, which would give you a 3t over here, right? Okay, and then for the j, you're going to have a plus 1 by a minus 1, which gives you this minus 1 over here, right? So this is what you get over here, right? Okay, and then what you do is you do your integrals here. This one would work out to be a quarter. 
this one works out to be minus one, right? So your line integral would be the quarter minus one, which is minus three quarter, right? Okay, so the main thing that I want you to get out of this is to work out this line integral along the C, which consists of a blue part and a red part. What you do is you work out the line integral along your first part first, which in this case is your blue part. Work out the line integral along the red part, and then you just add your answers. All right, so now we have all the definitions that we need to look at Green's theorem, right? Okay, so for Green's theorem, First thing you'd want in Green's theorem is that you're going to have a parametric curve C, right? Okay, so your parametric curve C is going to be a simple closed curve first of all, right? So your parametric curve would be simple and closed, right? So basically it has this sort of um, shape over here, right? Okay, so the parametric curve in this uh, diagram here, this is the parametric curve, right? So your parametric curve is, the parametric curve is the black outline over here on the outside, right? So it consisting of these four pieces. You start in here, you're moving around, right? So this is your first piece, this is your second piece, this is the third piece, and then this is the fourth piece, right? Okay, so notice this is piecewise smooth. You have some sharp corners if you want. One, two, three, four sort of sharp corners, right? Um, but the same, but it has the same sort of general kind of shape, right? What you're doing is you're going around, right? And it's not intersecting itself, right? So this parametric curve, which is the boundary over here, this is simple and closed, right? Okay, now the next thing you want to notice is that this parametric curve has a positive orientation, right? Okay, so positive orientation means that um, you're moving along a simple closed curve in a counterclockwise fashion over here, right? So your simple closed curve has a counterclockwise orientation, which is regarded as a positive orientation for a simple closed curve. Okay, so I have a parametric curve, which is simple, closed, right, positively oriented, right, which means that I'm going around in this counterclockwise fashion, and piecewise smooth, right, possibly piecewise smooth, which this one is piecewise smooth, right, it consists of uh, four sm individually smooth pieces, right. Okay, now if you have something that is simple and closed, right? Something that is simple and closed, like this one over here and this one over here, right? What it does for the plane is that it cuts the plane into an inside and an outside, right? Um, okay, so a simple closed curve, you're gonna have a region inside and you're gonna have a region outside, right? Uh, what we're focusing on is the region on the inside, right? So you have this for a simple closed curve C, right, you're going to have a region on the inside, and that region we're going to call uh, capital D, right? So your region D is bounded by your curve C, right? So your simple closed curve C is enclosing a region D over here, right? And you don't want to notice over here also, this simple closed curve would enclose a region on the inside over here, right? All right. Okay, so I have a uh, simple closed parametric curve C, uh, possibly piecewise smooth, right? Um, and positively oriented, right? Okay, going around in this counterclockwise fashion, right? And it encloses a region D over here, right? Um, now, what I wanna do is I wanna calculate a line integral along this, uh, line integral of a vector field along your parametric curve C over here, right? And we, in fact, we just saw an example of doing that, right? Um, we just saw an example of calculating a line integral along a simple closed curve. This one also actually is positively oriented, right? Okay, so a line integral of, okay, so your left-hand side in your Green's theorem, right? Left-hand side is a line integral along the simple closed curve C, right? So in other words, the 
the black outline that the curve outside curve over here that is enclosing your region d over here right so the c here right? okay so what green's theorem is saying is that the line integral along the curve c on the outside is actually equal to a double integral right so you can work out your line integral along the outside over here by instead of actually working out the line integral which we saw was a fair amount of work because what you needed was a parametric description for each of the pieces right instead of doing it that way sometimes a faster way to do it right is you could work it out as a double integral right so yeah how you work it out as a double integral is well you need to use what your vector field is right so your vector field for your, the vector field that uh, you're doing the line integral over right um had an x and a y component right and for the purposes of green's theorem or for the statement of green's theorem you call the uh, the x component um capital p and you call the y component capital q right um so how you're going to work out your line integral along the boundary, right, is by calculating a double integral over region D in the XY plane. And we saw how to calculate um, double integrals for regions, for certain types of regions in the XY plane, right? So it's a double integral over this region D here, right? And what you're actually integrating is coming from your vector field, right? It, you take the the y component which is q you differentiate that with respect to x you take your um your x component which is p over here and you differentiate that with respect to y right okay so what this is over here depends on what the vector field is right and it makes sense right because here what you're doing is you're integrating a vector field right so if this over here on the right hand side is going to be equal to this well then obviously this inside here has to be somehow related to the vector field right and how it's related to the vector field is it's uh you take a vector field you just take the, the y component q differentiate that with respect to x take the the x component capital p differentiate that with respect to y and you subtract right so this line integral right which is a line integral on along this outside over here is equal to double integral over the inside where what you integrate in is the dq dx minus the dp dy all right so let's see an example of using green's theorem right um okay so this example in the notes you give on a simple closed curve that encloses a triangular region d right and your simple closed curve is piecewise smooth consisting of three pieces the c1 c2 and c3 right so you're seeing what the c1 c2 and c3 are right c1 is a horizontal line segment c2 is well it's a line segment um, and then c3 is a vertical line segment okay so these line segments are uh, they enclose in a triangular region d okay and what they're asking you to do is they're asking you to calculate this line integral along this piecewise smooth curve c right um by evaluating a suitable double integral right so this line integral over here if you're going to be using green th green's theorem right the line integral is what's on this um left hand side of the statement of the green's theorem right and how they want to want you to work it out is they want you to work it out by using the right hand side right so you need to first calculate this dq dx minus dp dy and then uh, this would be the function inside of a double integral over region d and the region d is, is what's enclosed by the piecewise smooth curve and the region d over here is a triangular region right okay all right so you see in it over here right what we're doing is we're using green's theorem right so this is the statement of my green's theorem here right and the line integral right is this is the given line integral that i want to work out and the vector field is inside here right so your vector field is x to the fourth i plus x y j right so that's my vector field here right right and how i'm going to work out um this line integral is they ask you to use greens right 
So it's going to be a double integral, right, over this function. And how you get the function inside there is you take the the q over here and you differentiate that with respect to x, right? So the q is x times y and you differentiate in that with respect to x, right? And then you're going to take the p over here and differentiate that with respect to y, right? So the p is x to the fourth and you differentiate that with respect to y, right? Okay, so that this over here, this is a statement of the Green's theorem, right? This line here, right? Okay, and now what you um now you just work it out, right? So we need to work out this double integral, right? So now what you have over here on this right hand side is just a double integral, and you're going to work it out by the methods that we know how to tackle a double integral, right? Um, but first thing, let's work out the derivative. So if I differentiate x to the fourth with respect to y, I'm just going to get zero, right? And if I differentiate this um, x y with respect to uh, x, right, uh, well, the y is just going to behave as a constant over here. When you differentiate the x, you're going to get 1, right? So you're going to get constant times 1, which is the y here, right? So what I get is I get the function inside my double integral. The function that I'm integrating is y, right? So I have a double integral of y, right? And at this point in time, this is just a normal double integral, right? So using the greens really isn't hard, right? Um, you just have your vector field over here, right? And you take um, this, the q over here, and you differentiate that with respect to x. Take the p over here, differentiate that with respect to y, right? And that's what, that is what goes inside my double integral, right? And now you have a double integral, and all you need to do is work it out, right? Okay, so if you have a double integral to work it out, um, it depends on the type of region, right? So any double integral that you want to calculate, or well, at least in this class, right, um, you first need to figure out what type of region you have, right? Now, we saw that we had four types of regions. We had rectangular, we had type 1 and type 2. Okay, so you had rectangular, right? You had type 1 and type 2, right? And then the last type was polar, right? Okay, so polar like this, right? Now, this obviously is not polar, right? For, for it to be um, polar, something is polar once you start to see like arcs of circles in the region, right? And this has no arcs of circles, any sort of circles in it, right? These are just straight line segments, right? So this type of region over here, it's not polar, right? It's not rectangular. It's obviously not rectangular, right? This is a triangle, right? Okay, so to work this out, what you need to do is you need to either use type 1 or type 2, right? And this actually you can work out both as type 1 or type 2, right? But it's easier and probably less confusing to um, work it out as a type 1, right? Okay, so we're going to work this out as a type 1. And type 1, when you're doing a double integral for type 1, right, what you need is a function on top here, right? So y is equal to some function of x, right? And you need a function below, right? So y is equal to some function of x, right? Okay, so the function below in this case is, if you notice, what you have below over here is just this horizontal line on your x-axis, and that is y is equal to zero, right? So your function below is just zero over here, right? And the function above is this line segment over here, right? And what you need to do is, given these points, and the points were given to you, right? They told you that, yeah, okay? So you see in the points, they gave you the corner points in the diagram. The corner points are 1, 0, and 0, 1, right? So what you need to do is you need, using these two points, you need to figure out what the equation of the straight line is over here, right? Um, the intercept, you can see the intercept is 1, right? So if you say ny is equal to mx plus c, the c is equal to 1, and the slope is negative, right? Um, and you could always check and see by taking the differences of y over the differences of x, right? That the, um, the slope is minus 1, right? Okay, so this would be minus x plus 1, or the next way to write that is 1 minus x, right? Okay, so your top curve over here is 1 minus x, right? Right, so once you figure out um, that 
well what your um, your top curve is and what your bottom curve is what the function is for your top curve and what the function is for the bottom curve well we're using type 1 and the type 1 needs to lie between two vertical lines x is equal to a and x is equal to b right and you're seeing you have two vertical lines over here right you have the x is equal to 0 over here which is this y-axis and then you have x is equal to 1 right I mean you don't quite see the vertical line over here right but definitely this region is lying between x is equal to 0 over here and x is equal to 1 over here right okay so you have your limits of integration for your type 1 right and remember the setup for type 1 is that once you have your your function on top and your function below that's going to go on your inside integral right and then the x values here the a and the b would go on the outside integral right and then what you're going to do is you're going to integrate with respect to y and then x right okay so that is what we do over here right well what's done in the notes is you could describe this region if it is type 1 you could describe it as a set right the y values align between 0 and 1 minus x Your x values align between 0 and 1, so you have that over here, right? Okay, and um, either from your set description or just directly from the diagram, you get your limits of um, integration, right? So as I said, your top and bottom functions would uh, be here and here, right? Um, f of x and g of x, right? So your top function over here is 1 minus x, so that's your top limit over here. Your bottom is 0 over here, y is equal to 0, so that's 0 over here. And then the x values are 0 and 1, right? So that's for your outside integral, 0 and 1, your limits of integration, right? And your function that you're integrating in this case is y, right? You're integrating the function y, right? Okay, so you use an um, type 1, which means that we're integrating with respect to y first and x. So you integrate with respect to y first and x, right? Okay, so, right. So this is really just a summary over here. The summary is saying that what I have is that um, the line integral, when I apply my Green's theorem, turns out to be equal to this double integral turns out to be equal to this so this line integral when I apply the Green's theorem it's equal to a double integral so this line here is using Green's theorem right okay and going from here to here right what you're doing is you're recognizing that D is a type 1 region and you're using really you're using this result over here to integrate a type 1 region this is how you integrate a type 1 region so if you want going from this line to this line what you're doing is you're using this definition of how to calculate a type 1, right? Okay, so we have this line integral is equal to this iterated integral. And um, how you work it out is you just work it out in a normal way for calculating a double integral, right? So you work out the inside integral here first, which means that you integrate with respect to y first. So when you integrate with respect to y, you're going to get y squared on 2, right? And then you put in your limits of integration, which would be the 1 minus x here and the 0, right? Now, when you put 0 in over here, you're just going to get 0. So the only thing non-zero that you'd have is the 1 minus x here. So I have 1 minus x um, squared over here when I put in y is equal to 1 minus x. And notice at this point in time, once I put in the y values, what I have here, Okay, so at this point in time, once I put in the y values, all I have now is just a function of x alone, right? So going from here, once I do the first integral with respect to y, y is gone, and all I'm left with is just something involving x, right? And this is just a normal integral involving x. Um, uh, this over here, you need to know how to integrate this. You could use a substitution, u is equal to 1 minus x, or you could just sort of eyeball it and realize well what i'm doing is i'm integrating this bracket over here right so when i integrate the bracket i'm going to get a 2 plus 1 here right which is 3 and i need to divide by the 3 which is 6 right and well you need to be a little careful about um you need a minus sign over here because when you 
differentiate this you want to get back to this line here right um, okay or if you want if you're not happy with um, doing it that way you use the substitution u is equal to 1 minus x right anyway so once you integrate this you're going to get this expression and then what you do is you substitute the 1 and 0 when you substitute the 1 you're going to get 0 and when you substitute the 0 you're going to get minus 1 6 so you're going to get 0 minus minus 1 6 which is this 1 6 over here all right, so let's look at the second example of Green's theorem, right? I won't do all the details in this. This is from your textbook, which is the Apex Calculus textbook that I posted on the, um, on the website. And this is on, from page 875 of that textbook. All right, so what this is, this is a Green's theorem example, right? Okay, and what I want you to do is they want you to confirm the Green's theorem, right? Right, um, so this is a little different from the problem that we just did, right? The problem that we just did is we use Green's theorem to work out this line integral, right? Um, I know how you did it is you converted this line integral into a double integral via the use of Green's theorem, right? This example over here where they say in confirms, right? When they tell you something like, when they ask you to confirm the theorem, really what it means is you need to work out both sides, right? And you work out this side over here. So you work it out as a line integral, and then you work it out as a double integral, and you check to see if you, that your answers are the same, right? So then you check to see that your answer for the line integral is the same as the double integral, right? So that's what they mean by confirming the Green's theorem over here, right? Now, the notation here is a little different, um, not vastly different, but a little different from um, what I um, use, right? Okay, so this is your vector field here, right? And the vector field, this is your x component. So the x component is uh, minus y, and then the y component is x squared plus 1, right? And you want to remember in your Green's theorem that in your statement of Green's theorem, right, um, the capital P is the minus y and then the capital Q is the x squared plus 1, right? Okay. Right. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to So we want to work out your Green's theorem, but work out um, both um, the line integral and the, um, the double integral, right? Now, your line integral would be the line integral would be around this blue parametric curve over here. And you want to notice this blue parametric curve consists of um, three line segments, right? So if you're doing a line integral along this parametric curve, right, what you'd need to do is you'd need to work it out for this piece over here, for this piece over here, for this piece over here. So we've got a line integral for each individual piece and then add up your answer, right? So you notice that's what they're doing over here, right? What they're doing here is you're working out a line integral for C1, right? And C1 is this the horizontal curve over here and then c2 right um c2 is right c2 is this one over here going from so c2 is the one on the right hand side here going up and then c3 is the one coming down over here right okay now the next thing too is they gave you this diagram over here right but it didn't actually tell you Notice in the statement over here, they told you that, well, they say that you have a region R that's um, bounded by a triangle with uh, vertices, right? Okay, so the parametric curve is the boundary over here, right? And they didn't tell you, give you the parametric description of these line segments over here, right? So part of this question is you need to actually come up with the parametric description, right? Um, Okay, so that is what they do over here. They come up with your parametric description, right? 
Okay, and with these parametric descriptions, what they do is they actually work out what the line integral is for each of these, right? And when you work out what the line integral is for each of these, then you add up the answers, right? So they add up the 0, the 11 on 3, and then the minus 5 on 3. So that gives you 6 on 3, which is 2, right? So this line integral, when you work it out, right, when you work it out so over C1, C2, and C3, right? Over C1, the answer is 0. Over C2, the answer is 11 on 3. And over C3, the answer is minus 5 on 3, right? So overall, the answer would be 0 plus 11 on 3 minus 5 on 3, which is 2, right? Okay, so one reason I'm showing you this example, right, is you want to notice that if you're doing if you're doing a Green's theorem, right, and you decide that you want to try to work out the, the line integral, right? Sometimes doing the actual line integral Okay, so if you're doing, if you have a Green's theorem over here, do, calculating this line integral is sometimes quite a bit of work because this curve C could be piecewise smooth, right? And if it's piecewise smooth, it means that if you're going to calculate this line integral, you need to work out the line integral for each of the individual pieces, which is what they're doing over here, right? Okay, and that's a fair amount of work, right? Especially if you don't have parametric descriptions for the, the line segments or the individual pieces already, right? Okay, so doing the line integral in the greens sometimes is quite a, a fair amount of work, right? And working it out as a double integral, while it may seem a little um, more technical, right? It's sometimes it's less work, right? So here they work it out um, using a double integral. They um their definition of Green's theorem, right? Of their definition of this right hand side of Green's theorem is curl of f, right? And in fact, um, if you, in the plane, right, the curl of uh, your vector field, the curl of a vector field in the plane is actually equal to this expression over here, right? Um, so let's not worry too much about the fact that um, they call in, uh, they're using curl of f over here. This, when you see this curl of f, um, this integral of curl of f, right? really is just the same as what I have over here on the right hand side for Green's theorem, right? Or if you really um, want to work it out, right, you can use in your definition of curl, you use uh, the x component as p, the y component as q, and then the z component as zero. And then you work out the cross product and then you realize that you would get the same thing, right? Well, as the coefficient of i, right? Um, so that's really where it comes from by using F as being um, a vector field in the plane, right? With no um, Z component. Anyway, so over here, what they're doing is they're working out, uh, right? So you're working out a double integral, right? So your vector field is the P is minus Y, and then the Q is X squared plus one. So you need the DQ DX which is 2x, right, minus the dp dy, right, and the dp dy is minus 1, so minus, minus that is plus 1, right, so you get a 2x plus 1 over here, right, okay, so the dq dx minus the dp dy is 2x plus 1, right, and you need to do a double integral over the region r over here, so the triangular region that's enclosed over here, right, now this is um well def okay so when you're doing a double integral over here you first thing when you're doing a double integral is you want to realize what type of region it is right and this type of region is well it's definitely not a rectangle right and it's not a polar rectangle right so the question is whether this is type one or whether this is type two right
Okay, so this region here, we want to determine, well, we want to get an idea if this is type 1 or if this is type 2, right? And it's not type 1, right? It's not directly type 1, right? Um, because notice what you have is you have two different curves on the top, right? You have this curve over here on the top, and then you have this curve over here on the top, right? Okay, so while for type 1, what you'll have is a single curve that is spanning the top of your region. In this case, what's on top of the region are two different um, curves here, right? Okay, so if you're going to do this by type 1, what you need to actually do is you need to chop this region in two, right? And work it out for this half of your triangular region and this half of the triangular region, which is probably a little too much work, right? So this here, it's easier to think of this as a type 2, right? Okay, so this is a type 2, right? Uh, where your top curve is this right-hand side line segment over here. And then your bottom curve is this left-hand side line segment over here, all right? Okay, and notice we are type two, your line between two horizontal lines. So the horizontal line here is the, uh, the y is equal to zero over here. And then the next horizontal line is the y is equal to two, right? So this region here is lying between y is equal to zero and y is equal to two, right? So the the 0 corresponds to the C over here, and then the 2 corresponds to this D over here, right? Anyway, so this region over here is type 2, right? So that's how you would work it out as a type 2 region. And, well, next thing to you want to remember is that if it's a type 2 region, when it's type 2, what you do is you integrate with respect to X first, then with respect to Y, right? So that's what we, that's what's done over here. Right, so you have your 2x plus 1. You integrate in 2x plus 1 over this. Uh, you integrate in your 2x plus 1 over this triangular region over here, right? And how you're working it out is as uh, type uh, 2, right? Okay, so what they did is your, they worked out what they did the lines are, right? Each of these lines are, right? So your bottom line is y is equal to zero, right? Um, this line over here, this line is minus 2x plus 2, right? Okay, so your intercept here is 2, and you notice that this one here is negative slope, right? So this one here is the minus 2x plus 2, okay? And this one over here is the y is equal to 2x plus 2, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't take a certain amount of work to figure out what the line segments are. I'm just giving you an overview of how you would do this, right? Okay, so this is, you're working out this double integral here as a type 2 uh, double integral, right, over a type 2 region, right? Okay, so what you'd want is you'd want this here, you'd want this line segment expressed x in terms of y, right? And then you'd want this um, bottom curve over here also expressed x in terms of y, right? And that is what is done, okay? That is how we describe um, over here, right? So for type 2, right? Your top curve is x in terms of y, and your bottom curve is x in terms of y, right? So we would need x in terms of y over here, and then the x in terms of y over here, right? Okay, and they do it here, right? Well, actually here, this is y in terms of x, right? But all they do is they just solve for the x here, right? Okay, so this, this one here, this is y is equal to minus 2x plus 2, right? And you solve um, for the x over here. And when you solve for the x, what you're going to get is... Okay, so here, well, what you want to do is you want to solve for the x. So solving for the x, you could carry the 2 across. So you have y minus 2. And then you're going to divide by minus 2. So that would give you 1 minus y on 2, right? So that's how you get this y, 1 minus y on 2. This is x is equal to 1 minus y on 2. And you got that by 
using this equation over here and solving for this equation here what you did is you solve for the x right so x in terms of y right and likewise for this one over here you solve x in terms of y and you'd get y on 2 minus 1 right okay so that gives you your limits for the the type 2 region right um, x in terms of y over here so for your top curve x in terms of y over here for your bottom curve, right? And now what you do is you do your double integral, right? So first they integrate with respect to x. And they put in the y values. They don't have all the work in over here, right? So they do the inside integral here first. Notice the x is now gone and you're just left with something in, involving y. And then you integrate um, this here with respect to y to get your answer, right? So what I advise you to do is take a look at this example and see if you can work through the details. Right. Okay, so for when you work out uh, the integral of um, the d dq dx minus the dp dy, right? So when you work out the double integral side of your Green's theorem, right? What you end up getting is 2 over here, right? And when you worked out the line integral, you got 2 also, right? Okay, so that verifies your Green's theorem for you, right? Your Green's theorem is that uh, your line integral along the, the boundary of the region, right? So along the C, right, is equal to the double integral, right? So, so in this example, what I did is they worked out both the line integral, and that worked out to be 2, right? And then they worked out the double integral over the region over there, and that turned out to be 2, right? And you see that um, both of those are equal, right? So that confirms your Green's theorem, at least for this example.